Blender is hard, and one of the hardest thing to do is to make stylized looking grass like this. The crazy thing is, you can easily make this using geometry nodes. Now, initially for some people, geometry node may seem scary. It's possible to create an overly complex geometry node setup for this job, which means it's also possible for it to become too complex that it may not abide with the law of physics in the simulation in which we lived. In other words, it's God's will that our nodes shall not work. Luckily, that is not the case in this video. I have combined what we have done in part 1 into these simple node groups, which means you don't have to watch part 1 and get started right away. But if you want more detail on how it works, then you know where to go to. Now if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and download it open the file in the description. Let's right click on the viewport border and split the window, and we will change this to geometry nodes. If you select the grass, you'll see the node groups from part 1 here, but the question is, what do we do next? We want something like this, which looks very complex. We're gonna use a technique that many AAA games like Breath of Wild and Genshin Impact use. It's called grass card or grass billboards. It's basically the same thing you see in Minecraft, but now we're gonna make it face the camera always. So we need to do two things. First, convert the grass to meshes like this and make it face the camera. And second, we will store some UV coordinate data, which we can use to put a texture on it. We already got these curves from part 1, but how do we make them into cards? When you think of it, curve doesn't actually exist. When you click render, nothing appears because curve lines are infinitely thin, unless you change the settings which will convert the curve to mesh behind the scene. In geometry node, it's super simple. You can just replace these nodes with the curve to mesh node, and now, you have successfully converted every curve to mesh. But now, you see these thin strands and the vertex count that jumps from 1000 up to 200,000 vertices, which is totally unacceptable. I'm sure some of you will use this in an animation, and to not shoot yourself in the foot, we need to add a resample curve node which can reduce the number of vertices that we are generating. Just grab one of them and put it here, then reduce this number to something like 4 for now, to make sure Bender doesn't destroy our computer in the future. Fun fact! I destroyed my first laptop because I used Blender too much. Back then there was only Cycle's rendering engine, which means real-time rendering wasn't even a thing in Blender yet. And most notably, it still had that blinding white theme by default. My laptop overheated a couple of times before it decided to destroy itself, which makes me really sad. So if you want to pat my head or buy me a boba tea, you can now support me on Patreon. And you will also gain access to these scenes and assets I made over a couple of months. Your support has always been amazing, and you are the reason I'm able to turn my hobby into a side hustle. Now with that out of the way, let's get back to geometry node. The curve to mesh nodes also had this profile curve input, which allows us to use another curve profile for our generated mesh. A circle profile will generate a mesh like this, because all it's doing is extruding the circle along the curve path. In this case, we want to use a curve line as the profile. Change the start and end points to negative 0.5, 0, 0, and 0, 0.5, 0, 0 to create a line like this. Then plug this curve to our curve profile, and now you see this mesh over here. On our grass generator, let's put the radius to 1 and reduce the density. And congratulations, you have finally made grass cards. When you try to play the animation, the grass will wobble around like before. And now it's time we make them face the camera. In order to do that, we have to modify the curve normals. We can simply add the set curve normal node, put it before the curve to mesh node, and now we can offset the normals of our grass cards. But how do we make them all face the camera? And to tell that effectively, I need to bring you back many years ago in a story that I just made up. When normals was the king of the 3D kingdom. He can determine the shading based on whichever way he faces. Sometimes he faces the dark, leaving all the citizens scared. Other times he faces the light, which makes everyone happy. But the thing is, he's hard to control. But then one day, a bandit group called NPR Artists came and said we are going to control the normals. They made tools like the abnormal add-on and many other tools to edit the normals. The set curve normal was one of them. We can set the normal free by setting this to free. The only thing is, which direction do we forcibly replace the normals? We can get that by using this setup, which consists of active camera node, 
object info, vector map node step to subtract and cross product, the position node, and the curve tangent node. And now you can plug the new direction to the third curve normal. And you can see now that the cars face the camera. We can confirm this by going into the camera view by pressing this icon over here, then press this lock button to lock the camera to view. And as we move around the camera, you can see that the grass faces the camera always. Now that was almost too easy, I was almost going to jump around in happiness, but then I realized that the grass was practicing boxing behind my back. When I played the animation, the grass was doing a ha movement like, like it's trying to punch the camera. This is because every curve is defined by the control points that we set before, and each point is grabbing information from itself, but that's not really what we want in this case, and to fix this, we need to learn the concept of sampling index. Every point in our scene has a unique identifier called index. It's like how our appearance and interests are different from each other, which makes us unique in our own ways, and that's why you are already perfect as you are. We are going to add the curve root node and evaluate at index node, then plug them like this. This is basically telling every control point to get the information from the root of the curve instead. So in short, the root control point is like, oh, I need to reference myself, okay. And then all the points are like, oh, f I need to grab the information from the root instead. Hey, root index, can I borrow your information? Oh, sure. All right, thanks, pal. And that's essentially how the evaluate at index node work. Now with that out of the way, we got more consistent wavy pattern. The only thing left for us to do is to put a texture on it. But before that, we must store the UV map data somewhere. UV map basically determines how an image is displayed on our mesh. It's like folding a 2D image into the shape of our geometry. Fortunately, our grass is already a flat sheet of paper and now, the only thing left for us to do is to store the UV data. So, we'll use the store name attribute node, change this to vector, and give it a name like UV map, test, a letter T, a wakadava, or whatever you want. But now, we need to figure out what to store. But before I continue, here's another concept that you need to know. Yeah, I know, there are so many concepts and it can get overwhelming. But this is why I teach for free on YouTube, because the beauty of it is, you can just rewatch it again and again. Now, sometimes changing the type of geometry can cause some data to be lost. It's like when you move to another place and some items are lost along the way, or when one of your socks suddenly falls into the back room, leaving on you with only one every time. Here's the node called spline parameter. It only works with spline or curves, so when I convert the curve to mesh, suddenly that data is lost along the way, and now I'm sad. But luckily, my big brain thought of the capture attribute node. I place it here, plug the factor output into it, and now our generated mesh magically has that data even though it's not a curve anymore. Well, what are you waiting for? Add this setup now. And when you're done, we'll do the same thing with our wavy curve. And finally, with these two, we can combine them with a combined vector node to make this an awesome UV map. Make sure to plug it to the store attribute node we made earlier, so we can use the data in the shader after. Now we also want to store the surface normal that the grass is sitting on top. So just like before, Plug this to the capture attribute node and into another store name attribute, change the name to normal. Now I want to add randomness to my grass, so I add another store name attribute and give it a name called random. Grab a random value node and change this to vector and plug it here. As you can see, we get a random value for every vertex, but that's not really what we want. So grab the mesh island node and plug the island index into the ID input. And now we get a different random value on every grass card. And we'll finally arrive at the last part of this tutorial, the shader. Before we get into it, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Subscribe if you do and share this with your friends so you both can become blended professionals together. 
Now I need you to lift your hand off the keyboard and look at the screen. Remember those attributes we stored earlier? We can access them in the shaders using the attribute node. For example, if I want to get the UV map data, I need to type the name of the attribute that stores the UV map data, which hopefully for you is just UV map, but wait, you did not type Avakadrava, did you? And then I can just plug that into an image texture and just find an image that you want to display and that's basically it. Now for those who name your UV map correctly, you can just add a set material node in your geometry node setup and set this to grass and everything will just magically work. And now we are finally done with this grass. You can check out the shaders by going to material properties and change this from grass old to just grass. Oh, it's time for me to go. Seems like next time would be a little cozy. Until we meet again, have fun learning and happy blending. See ya!